So, yeah. So I have started recording, and it's a great okay. pleasure to introduce Sergey Aksenov from a, a very remote place, but nonetheless, we are all together now <laughs> in one meeting. So it's called Science Center uh, above the uh, Polar Circle, right? Yes, it is. Yes. In, in, in very it's north already of, cold here. <laughs> yeah, in very north of Russia. We will talk about uh, topological analysis of zeolite-like compounds. So over to you, Sergey. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vitaly. Uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to make a presentation during this very interesting uh, uh, meeting. Uh, uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to say that I, 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 I'm not a mathematician, but uh, predominantly a crystallographer, which works in the field of inorganic uh, crystal structure uh, and uh, inorganic materials. So, and uh, the aim of, of my project is to understand uh, the topological features, uh, not uh, uh, zeolites as themselves, but uh, uh, compounds related to zeolites and uh, try to understand uh, the relationship between uh, uh, the symmetrical, uh, the, the symmetry of these materials and uh, the topology and topological features of the cationic nets. So uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what uh, do I mean when I say zeolite-like compounds? So uh, the classical zeolites represent the trahedral frameworks, uh, but mm, uh, classical zeolite, in classical zeolites, one oxygen shared between two uh, tetrahedral cations. So uh, in our case, we will consider uh, the, the frameworks formed by two types of cations, tetrahedral and octahedral. And we will keep uh, the requirement when one ligand, oxygen ligand, uh, is shared between two types of cations. So we will consider these uh, frameworks as heteropolyhedral frameworks as classical. So, and uh, so what? Have, to have you moved to the next slide? Oh, no, 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 it's a brief introduction. So <laughs> I will move a little, like a few seconds later. <laughs> so, and um, uh, we will use uh, the, the theory uh, called OD, order disorder theory to predict uh, the different structures among these families of compounds. So uh, the order structure, uh, the OD theory, order disorder structures is, uh, uh, was developed uh, for the description of the symmetry uh, of polytypes. So polytype structure, we know polytypes, classical, po typical polytypes in uh, carbon, uh, in the silicon carbides, like where uh, we can find uh, different layers, alternate uh, layers of silicon atoms, uh, alternate with layers of uh, with carbon atoms. So, uh, <clears throat> but these compounds are predominantly layered. So the different types of stackings form different polytypes of these compounds. And, uh, uh, so the definition is uh, over here. So you can see that polytypes are periodic structures that are composed uh, by identical layers or maybe different roads and so on. And uh, there is a nomenclature of polytype structure developed by International Union of Crystallographer. And uh, the report uh, was published in 1984. And this report was based on the OD theory developed by uh, two well-known crystallographers, Professor Kate Dornberger Schiff and uh, from, uh, from Germany and Professor Boris Vagin from uh, Soviet Union later from Russian Federation. So, uh, uh, these professors proposed the, the, mm, the basis of this OD theory. So uh, 
why OD and why uh, this uh, theory is so useful. So uh, this theory is based on the symmetrical relationship between uh, the symmetry of different uh, units within the polytypes like layers, roads, uh, and so on. And uh, the symmetry of different uh, parts of the real crystal structure and the symmetry relationship between uh, different parts, uh, modulus of these, uh, of these uh, crystal structures. And these give, uh, gives us an opportunity to uh, explain at the very high level of the symmetrical understand of the symmetrical uh, point of view to understand the, the, the type and the character of polytypism to predict uh, uh, different types of polytype structures, to explain the, the twinning, to, to find uh, the general uh, features uh, between the locally equivalent structures and to find the symmetry. And uh, here you can see uh, the, oh, 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 I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I copied with Cyrillic uh, uh, letters, so I, I will translate. So uh, there are different types of polytype structures based on the uh, different type of chosen of uh, so-called uh, OD layers. Uh, for us, we can, we can replace this notation, this term like OD layer by, by more convenient or maybe more common like module or layer. So just, just a layer, but in, in correct form OD, OD is other layer. So here we see like uh, tantalum oxide uh, crystal structure of mica, uh, polytype and crystal structure of uh, alkaline free germinate. So uh, we see that uh, there are different types of layers. Like here we see the layers of these uh, octahedral dimers uh, and the shift between uh, the, the packing of these layers. This is a mica polytype uh, triple layered modulus alternate with, with potassium and sodium atoms. And here uh, we see the layer of uh, germinate tetrahedral trimers alternate with, with uh, uh, strontium ions. And the, the, the basic idea of the Ode theory is that, that uh, there are some, some uh, basic explanation of this theory. So the basic idea is that the interatomic uh, interactions is only local and there is one preferred way of, of connecting of our layers or any other types of objects like rods and so on, or some finite clusters. And uh, the, the structure uh, uh, have to feel full with the so-called vicinity conduction. Uh, so, uh, and there are three types of VC conduction. So uh, we have to select two dimensionally periodic layers belong to the finite number of equivalent classes. Uh, B, uh, adjacent layers, layers poses a common two dimensional lattice and equivalent sides of equivalent layers contact to adjacent layers such as the pairs are equivalent. So uh, uh, you can see that uh, the structure which uh, matches with the VC conductions, uh, it's not necessary for this structure to be periodic. So in this case, when uh, we have two ways, when we have uh, fully ordered structures, uh, which can be described by one of the 230 uh, space group, or we can uh, we can get the disordered structure, which cannot be uh, with uh, without keeping a period uh, periodicity, and we will have uh, the case of polytypism, 
and the case of OD structure. And uh, uh, there are some requirements for, the, for these uh, OD layers or modulus. So uh, they have to be two-dimensionally periodic uh, and they have to have a finite thickness. So because if the uh, thickness would be infinite, we will, we will get the whole structure. So, uh, so without holes, without interactions over more than one layer width. So they sh these layers should be uh, separate from each other uh, in the terms of uh, geometrical uh, uh, description. So uh, it's not necessary to, to remove this part from the whole structure, just we have to select this part in the whole structure. Uh, it's a, yes, it's a purely um, geometrical consideration. So uh, it's not necessary for the, um, for the OD layer to correspond to the real chemical layers. So in this case, uh, uh, that means that we uh, can use this approach, not only for layered crystal structures, but also for the, for the different types of the structure formed by clusters, by also by layers, by different types of roads or tubes, or for the framework types of the structures. And uh, of course, these OD layers could be either polar or non-polar. And we have to take into account the orientation in the case of polar, polar layers. Uh, here you can see an example uh, of the, mm, of the idealized uh, structures represented uh, or formed by different types of layers. So here you can see like the, the second sequence of uh, non-polar layers like A, 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 and the uh, slight shift uh, in the second uh, sequence between these layers. So uh, capital A means, uh, non-polar, or uh, two ways of the second sequence uh, of the polar layers. Here you can see layer zero and one, they preserve the same orientation, Why in the category three, you see that uh, adjacent layers change the, the, the orientation of the layers. So uh, in this case, uh, these, uh, two types of uh, stacking uh, belongs, different types belong to different categories. So here B and D uh, indicates the, the changing of the, of the orientation of the layers. Uh, in the case when our structure is formed more than one type of OD layers, we will get uh, four types of categories. So category one, where we have, uh, so here uh, I, I have to mention that here, uh, these uh, examples are formed by three types of, of the layers. So uh, here in the category one, we have, uh, we have the whole structure formed by one non-polar layer uh, and two types of, of the polar layers. So in, uh, in the same, in this type of, of, of stacking sequence. Uh, so one polar, uh, one non-polar layer uh, and uh, two polar layers, they change uh, uh, the orientation like uh, after, after two polar layers. So one non-polar, two polar in one orientation, two polar in another orientation, and then again, uh, non-polar non -polar layer. In category uh, two, all the layers are uh, polar and they preserve the same orientation. So in, uh, in category three, we have no uh, non-polar layers, but the orientation of, of the layers, of the polar layers changes. And in category four, we have two types of polar layers, A and A. 
So but we can use another letter like W to show the, the different types of layers. And we have only one type of polar layers. So of course, in the case of, of uh, uh, two types of OD layers, uh, the, the polar layers could be absent. And uh, uh, all the families, all, all the categories can be described by the OD groupoid. So uh, for, the, for the host, uh, for the ordered structures, uh, we have to use one uh, of, the, uh, of the crystallographic space group. Why? Uh, while for the, mm, for the, uh, for the uh, polytype structures, for the OD structures with the, with the type of uh, disorder, we have to use so-called OD groupoid, uh, which have to mention the symmetry uh, of each module of each OD layer and the symmetrical operation between uh, the, the symmetry of the adjacent OD layers. So for the for the uh, for the uh, examples with only one type of OD layers, there are four hundreds OD groupoids. While for the uh, for the case of uh, OD families with more than one type of OD layers, the number of OD groupoids is infinite. Uh, and for example, how to uh, uh, how should we draw the symbol? of the OD uh, groupoid family. So I have to choose the category four. So with uh, three types of layers, uh, two polar layers, two non-polar layers and one polar layer. So uh, the symbol of the OD family of the groupoid described the uh, OD family uh, will contain the symmetry of each layer and the so-called the shift in the player plane where uh, R and S is, is the vector uh, of this shift. Uh, and uh, here you can see the hierarchy of the uh, vicinity con uh, of the structures uh, which, uh, uh, which can be uh, which follow uh, the vicinity conduction. So we have uh, fully ordered structures uh, and so-called OD structures. OD structures uh, described by, by the equivalent, only one type of equivalent layers. So we have 400 of OD groupoids and uh, the OD structures with more than one type of OD layer. So, and they could be both periodic or non-periodic disordered structures. And there is a book uh, 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 written by professors Ferraris, Makoviki, and Merlina, uh, who, uh, which, um, uh, and this book describes uh, in detail uh, the, the concept of the OD theory and everyone can read it if it's uh, if it would be interesting uh, for the for fun, just for fun. Uh, and um, I uh, uh, we applied uh, the the concept of the OD theory to describe uh, crystal structure of the zeolite type uh, zeolite related compounds with the uh, different types of the heteropolyhedral frameworks. So uh, in our case, we choose uh, two families of compounds. The first one here, you can see that the general chemical, uh, the general, not chemical, it's a general formula of, of, of the family of compounds where uh, square brackets uh, denote the composition of the, of the heteropolyhedral framework. So it's classical framework formed by uh, M octahedra and this uh, uh, tetrahedral part of the structure. Uh, and uh, this framework is, is zeolite-like. It, con uh, it contains large voids and large channels. So it's interesting to, to study these compounds and to compare the different polytypes. So uh, this compound, uh, 
this family of compounds uh, is formed by, by the alternation of two types of layers. The tetrahedral uh, layer formed by two types of uh, tetrahedra with the symmetry uh, layer PCN2. So it's a nonpolar layer. Uh, uh, you can see this very beautiful uh, layer uh, and their symmetrical operation, uh, which uh, are observed in this layer. Uh, and this uh, tetrahedral layers uh, layer alternates with with the uh, layer formed by two type formed by uh, isolated uh, uh, aluminum O6 uh, octahedra. So, uh, of course, uh, thanks to uh, different types of desymmetrization, we have uh, different types of local uh, orientation of the octahedra uh, within the layers, but uh, both of them have the same uh, supergroup. While, while the local symmetry uh, of, of, uh, of tetrahedral layers is the same for different types of polytypes. And uh, uh, following the rules of the notation of the OD groupoid family symbol, the, the symbol of the whole family of the uh, polytypes within the family of compounds with the above mentioned formula can be written as here. So uh, the symmetry of the tetrahedral layer, uh, the symmetry of the octahedral layer, layer and the, the, the shift between these layers. So how many polytypes do we have? So uh, we have uh, two so-called uh, uh, MDO polytypes. MDO polytypes means that uh, it's called the maximum, maximal degree orders, uh, ordered polytypes. Uh, the polytypes which concern the, the, the smallest amount of different layers within the, within the whole structure. So we have two types of MDO polytype. MDO1 polytype and MDO2 polytype. It's very interesting that uh, MDO1 polytype uh, is exist and can be observed in the real crystal structure. Why the MDO2 polytype is, uh, is a hypothetical. So we use uh, the OD theory to predict the crystal structure of this polytype. In general, uh, they look very similar, but the, the, the uh, the difference between the crystal structure and the difference uh, in symmetry lead, lead to different types of properties of this framework. I will see it, uh, I, I will show it, I will show it later. So the MDO1 polytype can be obtained when, when the screw axis is active in the uh, octahedral layer and the translation vector correspond to us centering is the generation operation for the for the whole structure and uh, this polytype correspond to the to the real crystal structure of 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 the um, of the well known compound uh, while uh, the uh, mdo2 polytype can be obtained when in the octahedral layer uh, the inversion center the center and uh, screw axis is active and uh, in this case, the translation component, just, re just a simple translation component would be the generation operation. In this case, we will, uh, we will lose the R centering and the space group for the whole structure would be PCNB or PBCN in, in the standard setting. So uh, this polytype uh, hasn't been yet observed uh, for, the, for, for, for this uh, family of uh, compounds, but uh, it could be because uh, the DFT calculation show that uh, uh, the energy of the formation uh, is very similar to that for the MDO1 polytype. <clears throat> and of course, uh, uh, different sequence of operators active in tetrahedral uh, and octahedral layers uh, lead to the uh, formation of the, uh, for the infinite 
infinite set of non MDO polytypes. And uh, uh, one of the most simple uh, uh, among these non MDO polytypes is, is the uh, was observed in borophosphate in, uh, of aluminum and cesium, which contains four uh, types of layers, uh, four types of octahedral layers. Uh, in uh, each uh, L4N, uh, like in L4 and L6, uh, uh, in these layers, uh, screw axis going along a parameter is active while in the 4n plus 2 layers the inversion center and screw axis uh, parallel to c uh, are active in this case we will get uh, the orthorhombic structure uh, observed for the for the borophosphate and uh, in this case we will uh, the, the whole structure can be uh, can be described by the space group PB, PCAB. Uh, it's very interesting uh, what's going on with the topology of the frameworks. Uh, as I mentioned uh, above, so uh, these uh, frameworks are classical. And uh, what's the tile sequence for the, for the polytype? So they're very, very familiar. Uh, in uh, in stoichiometry, in in the types of layers, what's what has happened with the with their topologies, and uh, you can see here that the sequence of natural tiles are uh, slight different for the for the different types of of uh, polytypes. So that means that for uh, even for uh, for very common structures, the the topology uh, topology uh, is very sensitive. So uh, <clears throat> even slight difference in in the orientation of the layers will lead the um, will will lead will lead to the uh, appearance of the another type of natural tiles. So here you can see. Uh, colored by the same color, the, the common uh, topological equivalent types of, uh, of natural tiles. Uh, while here you can see the, 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 the tiles unique for the different polytypes. And the results, why, why is it so important to analyze uh, the, the, the polytype structures for framework uh, zeolite-like compounds. Here you can see the, the calculated uh, uh, parse for the possible, uh, uh, for the migration of the different types of uh, extra framework cations. And here you can see like for MDO1 polytype, we have two dimensional layer for, for, for example, for sodium migration, while for MDO2 polytype, we have only uh, one-dimensional channel for for sodium migration, and for for uh, for non-MDO polytype, we have again four-dimensional layer. So uh, three structures they are quite similar, but in general they represent different types of chemical properties. Uh, so here you see the, the the comparative data for different types of polytypes, and it's uh, very interesting to look at uh, to look at the the energy. So uh, the energy of uh, the energies, uh, the values of energies uh, obtained using DFT calculations show that uh, the energies are, are very similar. So uh, it, that means that in generally there are no preferences for for the for the crystallizations of, of different types of polytypes. So we we cannot control uh, the the appearance of different types of polytypes. Uh, so uh, in this case, it's very interesting and it's very it's really very important to uh, and take into account the the, the possibilities 
of the appearance of different types of polytypes. Uh, however, I, I, I agree that most of crystallographers uh, ignores the, the fact of, uh, uh, not ignores, but uh, don't take into account the, the possible polytypic, uh, polytypic behavior and polytypic nature on the, on the different crystal structures. However, uh, it's, it's very important. So uh, another, uh, another uh, compounds within these families uh, are rubidium uh, analogs, rubidium structures. Uh, hey, you see no, uh, in general, we see no relationship between, with, between the previous structures and this one. So in the previous structures, we had uh, tetrahedral layers. Why in this family of compounds, we have, we have a chains, we have, we have chains, uh, tetrahedral chains going along C perimeter. However, uh, this octahedral layer uh, is very uh, uh, relates relates to the to the octahedral layer in previous family of compounds, and actually it also can be de uh, can describe in the terms of Ode character. So two layers: the first layer uh, tetrahedral. It's a, it's not a layer as itself; it's a quasi layer. Uh, layer formed by tetrahedral chains and layer formed by isolated octahedral. And it's very interesting to, to, to uh, when we found out that uh, uh, tetrahedral chains and tetrahedral layers have uh, the common, the symmetry of the tetrahedral layers uh, and tetrahedral quasi layers formed by tetrahedral chains have the common uh, supergroup, which means that uh, there is a OD relationship between, between these two families of compounds. And another compound uh, also with the heteropolyhedral framework, uh, it's a, uh, represented by uh, very complicated sulfates and phosphates. And uh, why it was important for us to understand the, topo uh, the, the topological and uh, polytypic relationship within this family of compounds, because they represent both modular structure and tracts interesting because of the magnetic properties. Of course, a magnetic properties strongly depends strongly depend on the uh, topology of the cationic. Uh, interactions between magnetic ions. And of course, uh, the changing of the topologies uh, due to different symmetrical, symmetrical relationship between different polytypes lead to the formation, of course, of different uh, sets of uh, contacts and interactions within, between magnetic ions. And uh, of course, uh, that will lead to the formation of different types of, of the of the parts for the migration of, for example, sodium ions. Sodium ions. Uh, it was previously described that uh, that uh, uh, two types of modification of manganese sulfate uh, show the doubling of the of the C parameters. However, these compounds have been described as polymorphs. However, uh, they should be described as polytypes. So uh, Ben Yahya show that uh, these compounds uh, build up by the by the same type of layers. However, uh, he hasn't found the the, the difference in uh, in the uh, in the symmetrical relations between these uh, adjacent layers. So uh, the family of manganese sulfates uh, is formed by the two types of layer uh, and can be described by this OD groupoid. And uh, the first layer uh, is formed by the, by the sulfates, uh, sulfate tetrahedra, uh, linked by two types of manganese uh, polyhedra, manganese octahedra and manganese uh, 
triangular by pyramids with the symmetry PMC to one. And these uh, layers differently alternate uh, along a perimeter forming different types of polytypes uh, and uh, different types of MDO polytypes. And thanks to so-called uh, NFZ relation, uh, we can calculate the amount of, of these polytypes. So uh, again, uh, MDO1 polytype uh, was known while, uh, while the uh, MDO2 polytype uh, had been uh, predicted based on the, on the concept of the odor disorder uh, theory. So uh, here you see that uh, in the previous uh, structure, we can say that, uh, sorry, that these layers preserve uh, the, the uh, orientation within the stacking along a parameter while uh, in, the, in the second uh, polytype with PMCN uh, uh, space group, uh, the, the orientation of the polar layers changes. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the possible non-MDO polytype uh, can be uh, present, uh, it can be observed uh, for, for this family of compounds. And uh, it's very interesting, uh, the, the link between, uh, between the concept of, of the OD theory, which operates by the very um, strong, which is based on the very strong um, mathematical fundament and the concept of modular crystallography, uh, where, where we can a little bit uh, ignore uh, the, the, the real symmetry, the real math base of the symmetry and just operate the, the terms like module and so on. And uh, we can show that different types of uh, polytypes formed by different types of modules like A and S, where A, uh, S means sulfate module. Uh, uh, we can see that the, the orientation of the sulfate uh, groups a little bit different. So uh, if we uh, want to uh, predict uh, another structure belongs to this family, we can, we can alternate the, the different uh, orientation of these uh, sulfide layers within within the within the uh, within the same structure, and uh, it was very uh, interesting because uh, these compounds, natural mineral ethylmenite and this phosphate, have been uh, described as a, as a separate group of compounds. So outer of, of this uh, sulfate. However, uh, uh, because uh, why uh, it had happened because of the of the reducing uh, of the coordination on, coordinational number of one uh, of one uh, octahedron. So uh, it reduced from coordination number six to five because of the of the increasing of the distance between central cation to apical vertices, vertex, uh, or uh, to apical vertices, yes. And uh, of course, the symmetry of this layer reducing. However, the, uh, the uh, analysis of the similarity between uh, sulfate and another type of compounds show that we can uh, easily ignore this reducing because uh, because the delta uh, is the the coefficient of similarity is is the same, so these structures are the same. And uh, uh, of course, about topological features. So here you can see the the cationic nets uh, and uh, and the set of the tilings occurs in in different type of polytypes. And about polymorphic modification, if we substitute one uh, alkaline cation by uh, another one, like change cesium or rubidium, 
so, so, uh, sodium by replace uh, sodium by rubidium or cesium, we will get uh, completely another structures. So uh, thank you very much. Sorry that my <laughs> that my research is not strongly based on the mathematical fundament, but I, I would like to show you the, the the possible application of the of the of the uh, of this concept based on the very strong math fundament to for for crystallographic application. Thank right. you very much. Yeah, thank you, Sergey. Let us thank Sergey first. Thank you. So by clapping or uh, <laughs> So thank you very much. Let me.